Hey, welcome to Urban Monk TV. Back to the cafe racer and polishing aluminum. So we've got a couple of covers. I'm starting with this one that goes over the uh, points and ignition. And um, this has had some scratches. So the one that I had on my bike was actually cracked, so I ordered this off of eBay. But this has been scraped up a little bit too. Um, you know, it's not perfect, but uh, price is right. And again, budget project. And uh, I'm cleaning this up first by sanding by hand with a spongy block that I'm guessing is 250, 300 grit, something like that. It, it didn't even say cheap Harbor Freight stuff. And, uh, and then to get into the little nooks and crannies and to work into some of the little divots, I'm uh, using my rotary tool, you know, Dremel-like thing. And uh, I've got two different size sanding mm, disc is the wrong word, it's a cylinder, drum maybe, but um, working into here with that and just sanding away. So right now it's about sanding away all of the, the tarnish and black and there's a clear coat on these and at the same time I'm painting parts outside the valve covers and that kind of thing. So start out with about 300 grit. If you can see, pretty rough right now. Difficult to get into areas like this, but the screw is going to go there anyways, the screw that holds it on. And uh, took that Dremel and just worked around this edge to try to get a more defined line. I'm not going to put um, stickers that, you know, say double overhead cam or Suzuki on these. I'm just going to uh, polish them and let them shine. So, again, starting out. Uh, pretty rough 300 grit or so So we're going from you know kind of a tarnished See those darker spots on this side with the 300 grit and Just sanding my hand until we're getting down to something That feels pretty smooth to the touch, but it's still very oh we'll call it a brushed finish and So that's pretty good for this step. Now we're going to move on to, I uh, believe I have 600 grit is my next step up. 600 grit. This is wet or dry. Each successive um, level or grit uh, should take a little bit less time each time. Um, you know, the initial is the most work, but working around this edge, what I'm doing, so I've got this kind of lip here. What I'm doing is starting with a really good fresh corner and working like this as I rotate the part this way until I know I've gone 360 degrees. Then I get a fresh corner rotate the opposite way, go 360 degrees with the part the other way, switch corners, switch my rotation 360 degrees, and then finally the last corner. So I do four corners in two different directions all the way around, if that makes sense. Okay, I'm done with the 600. Next step I have is 1500. It'd be nice if there was one in between there, but I don't have it, so. We're on to 1500. This is kind of what we're looking like right now. Let's 
Still very dull, very brushed look. Can't really see if you can see the reflection of the camera here. That's what you're getting so far. I'm up to 2,000 now. Yeah, a little bit more of a shine, you can see the camera better. And my big melon head. Okay, so I've got a pretty nice sheen going on this thing, <clears throat> and the next step is to polish, essentially, and uh, this is Tripoli compound. This is what I was going to use, but it got, uh, got a little old and dried up. I have a small amount of the same brown polishing compound. This has a little bit heavier cut to it, so you start with this, and I've put this buffing wheel onto my bench grinder. I'm um, going to put this on there, put this part on here, and buff this up. It should start to shine pretty good. Then I'm going to follow, uh, follow up with a metal polishing compound. And uh, you can't use the same buffing wheel because you're already going to have this stuff in it. So I've got another smaller one here on my drill press that I'll do the polishing compound. So two-step process, uh, you know, deeper cut, and then the finest polishing which it also has just the slightest cut to it. Um, that's what we're going to attempt to do here. Okay, so I've been working with this a little bit and uh, my brown compound is very dry. Um, I probably just need fresh stuff. It's not working well. It's flinging off of the buffing wheel and I am giving up on this. But what I tried was uh, some of this mag and aluminum polish from Mothers and uh, that's actually giving a nice result, so I was just doing it by hand. I'm going to move to this buffing wheel with this stuff on it and uh, try to do it a little bit more automatically, and we'll see how this turns out. It immediately turns black. You don't need a lot of pressure. because it's spinning a bit and then uh, if I just buff that off it's pretty nice I'm gonna keep working this and buff it off with a towel Mm, starting to look pretty good. Hi. <laughs> Not perfect. It's a used part, but you know, it's kind of got some character to it. Okay, so we've got the one cover polished up. Uh, I think as good as I'm going to get it. Um, could be better? Sure. I don't know. It's, it's got chips. I mean, this thing's been scraped up. And, uh, of course, there's supposed to be a sticker here that says DOHC or Suzuki. I'm going to forego that and uh, just go with my face. And uh, we've also got the clutch assembly cover to polish up. We've got the generator cover to polish up. And then um, the cover that's over the uh, gear shift and, and the front sprocket. I'm just going to go with the aluminum paint. So what we got to do now is uh, get the valve clearances checked and I got to get those valve tappets um, ordered up because I um, <clears throat> get everything off eBay. It takes a while to get here. So I have now painted this valve cover. Oh, and the other thing we have to polish is the uh, end caps for the... Um, go in here. These are going to get that mirror-like finish right there. So that'll be fine. Anyways, um... Valve clearance, we have to have the cams in a certain position, uh, either A or B in this diagram. And then um, the clearance between them has to be 
0.03 millimeters to 0.08 millimeters. And uh, I'm going to try to go a little bit toward uh, 0.08 if I can. Uh, but first, let's just measure what we have here. We've made a lot of changes by grinding the valves and uh, putting in new cans. So, got to find out where we're starting. Get your journal and your pencil because you got to write it all down. And we got some math to do to figure out which shims we have to order. Okay, so <clears throat> number one exhaust, I've got the cam in one of the correct positions. And closest thing I have to 0 0.08 is 0 0.076. So I'm going to start on the big side. That is not fitting. I'll just keep going down 0 0.06. No, I would guess that all of my clearances have tightened way up given the uh, valve work that I did. And 0 0.038 does not fit, so I gotta get that shim out of there. It's obviously just about contacting the uh, valve, so that shim is not gonna work there. We may run into this quite a bit as we go. So, to get this out, I need to put my tool in against the bucket the tension is so tight that I can't even get the tool in there. Can I get it on this side? Yeah, there we go. So there I'm pressing the bucket down, but the shim is clear, and I can reach in with a forceps or a small needle nose and pull out my shim. And then when I've got exhaust number one in the B position, that also has exhaust number two in the uh, A position, so I can go ahead and start measuring there. And here, I also cannot get in there. So, it looks like <laughs> I'm on the road to buying two shins. My guess is having ground all the valves, um, all of them are going to be coming up slightly and uh, we're probably going to need to buy quite a few shins. And I'm just going to keep going then. Um, so, you know, now I've got those who else is in the right position? This one is in the right position for measuring, so I'll grab that, and that is it. Then I'll have to rotate my crank. And again, not fitting. Let's rotate. Oh, I'm going to need to put a shim in here though as that lobe comes around, so you got to have a shim in the bucket while you're doing this. <clears throat> so I've been through all of these. None of them fit at the minimum spec. And so I've got some with 2.7 millimeter shims in them. That is the thinnest shim that I have. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to reposition the 2.7s into the positions where I had 2.8s in hope that I will find uh, at least a measurable gap there but I am going to have to take a stab in the dark on ordering some shims that are, you know, do I go to 2.6? Do I go to 2.55? Do I go to 2.5? Unknown. Um, we're going to have to just order some up, wait for them to come, put them in, measure again. So this will take a while, but meanwhile we can be polishing other parts and having fun in other areas. Okay, so I did a little uh, deductive reasoning here by taking one of the thinnest shims I have, a 2.7, and moving it into one of the positions where I had one of the thickest shims, uh, I was able to put one of these valves into spec. So right now, by taking the 2.7 from exhaust 1 and putting it in intake 3, I've got intake 3 measuring right at the upper clearance limit, which is 0 .08. Um, 
you know, that's a good spot to be. There's a lot of room for wear there. So now I can leave that shim there. It gives me a little insight looking at what my measurements were, because I had that in my journal, and what the shims were in those spots, and knowing that that won a full ten, a hundredth of a millimeter, um, one full hundredth going from 0 0.08, or sorry, going from a 2.8 to a 2.7, so that's actually a tenth, I'm sorry. Uh, that made the difference. So maybe what I gotta do is, it's still a little bit of a guess, but I'm gonna go one tenth of a millimeter on all the shims that I need, order those up, get those in, and chances are I won't waste too much money on the wrong shims by doing that. I hope that makes sense, but um, it's still not definitive answer, but it's a little more insight and uh, just helps. So I did this again. I took the 2.7 from exhaust number four, swapped it into intake number two, and now I've got this one measuring um, above the spec. It's actually at 0.1 millimeters, uh, which is too much of a gap. So um, I'm learning that maybe a half step from where we were is probably a safe zone. We don't want to go too far. Um, but I do have some 275s, so that's what I'm going to do now is drop a 275 in where this was and uh, see if that puts me right in the middle of the okay range on that one. So I did swap the number two exhaust with the number two intake. So now I've got a 2.75 shim in here and I'm at 0 0.076 is the thickest that fits in there. Call that 0 0.8, that is my in spec. So right now I've got two of these in spec, uh, both on the intake side, two and three. And uh, let me look at the math and see what other options I still have. Also want to show you this. <clears throat> this is uh, the generator cover that I want to polish up and get it shining. And uh, I've got this stator in here. And this, came, this part I got off eBay because the one that was on my engine was really scratched up. And it came with this stator. So this is an untested stator. You know, I'm going to assume it doesn't work until I know it does work. What I do know is the old one worked. And uh, later on in this video series, I'll test all of these with uh, a digital multimeter. But um, for now, while I'm polishing this part, I don't want those electronics in there. Uh, so I'm going to get them out. And they really set these screws in tight. So you need your impact driver. And it's a number two Phillips, not a JIS screw. And I think they've got a thread lock on them. They feel like they do. So anyways, you'll probably never get these out without an impact driver, is my guess. There. But the impact driver makes quick work of it. And a shout out to Rodney from Allison Sales, quite a craftsman. He uh, suggested that I stop using my regular claw hammer to hit my impact driver uh, because the steel in that hammer um, is so strong that it could chip a piece off of this impact driver and, well, send a bit of shrapnel flying, perhaps at my eye. I uh, suggested a ball-peen hammer is a softer metal and uh, won't damage this thing, so... Made the switch, Rodney. Thank you. So not to keep beating a dead horse here, but uh, this particular part had one, two, three, four, five screws in it that were never coming out without an impact driver. So go back and watch the videos and see how many times I've used this tool. I literally got this for $9.99, maybe it was $14.99, something. It's not an expensive one, but you can't do this without one of these things. So put it in your toolbox. So I've got this stator out now. Um, looks good. One doesn't really know by looking. I mean, you can see if there's some burning. Um, if there's that, then you know, you've gotten hot, obviously, from a short of some kind. 
but visually this one looks okay. The thing I wanted to mention with this is um, this is looking to be original and uh, so what nearly 40 years old don't assume that the insulation I mean the wires are flexible but don't assume that the insulation on those wires is continuing to be flexible after 40 years uh, my point is I'm pulling this out it's got some memory to the shape of the wire don't be wrenching it around and cranking on it and, and you'll just crack the insulation and create a short in what could otherwise be a part that will go another 40 years if you baby it, um, especially for the number of miles that we put on these you know, special bikes that aren't so comfortable. It, this could last a long time, but don't be rough with it. That insulation can get brittle. Big parts need a little help. making progress. So I got a long way to go. We've got uh, two more large covers like this. Um, is it two? Well, I got this one and then the uh, clutch. So pretty big. Um, this is going to have to be a wrap for this week. And uh, we did some pretty cool things. Got a bunch of parts painted. We are ordering shims, and we at least polished one piece, and uh, this is work in progress. This is where we're heading, or better, and that's it. Hey, if you like what I'm doing here, uh, click like and subscribe so that you can follow along. This thing's going all the way to, well, DMV license tabs registration riding through the California canyons and mountains. That's the goal. Um, maybe even, uh, we'll see how it turns out. Maybe I'll take it to a show someday and see if I can get a participant ribbon as are so popular today. Um, thanks. Take care.